gentlemen. It's a college football rivalry that takes a backseat to none. On. Alabama got a leg up on the rest of the University of Tennessee team out to the center. We have the coin toss about to take place right now with the Alabama coin toss people are all the seniors who are captains. And here come the volunteers onto the field. Tennessee 2-1-1, one, one, losing last week to Florida. They have that very big, important one loss in the SEC. This is a must game. Most feel that two losses cannot win the Southeastern Conference Championship. Alabama is undefeated in the Southeastern Conference today. And, of course, they're looking down the road. No, they have to play Auburn at the end of the year. And this, too, is a critical game for the Alabama Crimson Tide. But Johnny Majors feels this football team has played very well. He says we have a tough schedule. They had to open with UCLA. Alabama losing narrowly last week to Penn State. And the Crimson Tide, one of the best football teams in the country in terms of balance. They can throw well, run well, they play good defense. They may be a little bit suspect in the secondary. And that could certainly be something that could be exploited today by Tony Robinson of Tennessee. The coin toss about to take place. We'll be back to tell you who won the toss and who'll start on offense in just a moment. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. One in West End Park right here in Birmingham near Legion Field when Alabama won six to nothing. They lead in the series 34-26-7. Tennessee has a three-game win streak going. And prior to that, Alabama had an 11-game win streak. And then prior to that, Tennessee had won four. So it's been a streak series. And the big question here is can the volunteers continue with their three-game winning streak? Ray Perkins Crimson Tide hopes to put a stop to that this afternoon. The Tide undefeated in the Southeastern Conference, but with a narrow loss to Penn State last week like to tell you about the coin toss. Alabama won the toss, deferred their choice till the second half. Tennessee will receive and go on offense to begin this game here today. The University of Tennessee Volunteers and the Crimson Tide of Alabama, one of the premier college football rivalries in the nation. Number 11, you see warming up on the sideline for Alabama is Mike Shula, the junior. 6'2", 200 pounds from Miami. And yes, Mike Shula is the son of Don, as you've been told so many times before. Mike, this Tide team together. The man you just saw, who wears number 10, is Tony Gunslinger Robinson, a senior from Tallahassee, Florida, and he'll be going on offense to lead this volunteer attack. Tony Robinson is fifth in efficiency, passing efficiency in the nation, I might add. Number 36 is Pete Panuska. He will be taking the kickoff from Van Tiffen. Slight breeze here today. However, it's swirling on the field and shouldn't have any big effect on this ball game unless the wind picks up. Van Tiffen's kickoff is going to carry Panuska back to the back of the end zone. And out of the end zone it goes, and the Volunteers will set up their offense on the 20-yard line. Tony Robinson, he's thrown for over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns, heads this Tennessee offense. A freshman, 28, Keith Davis, starts at tailback today. He's a breakaway threat for Tennessee. McGee, Swanson, and Plink Scales will swap at the wide receiver's position. They have three very good ones. Jeff Smith at the bottom of your screen is the tight end. Best offensive lineman, perhaps, is number 68, Bruce Wilkinson, the left tackle for the University of Tennessee. First play from the line of scrimmage from Legion Field in Birmingham. going to give to the freshman about eight yards for Keith Davis a freshman from Nashville tackled by 58 Wayne Davis and that crimson tide bend but both don't break defense these fellas some suspects in the secondary we'll see how Tony Robinson plans to take advantage of that second down to Tennessee first down Tennessee William Howard the 225 pound fullback number 35 with the first down for the volunteers Bob, starting off, Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator for Alabama, is giving his cornerbacks some help. Obviously, threatened a little bit by the passing skills of Tony Robinson and this big threat wide receivers. And uh, Tennessee's going to try to run the ball at him, I think, to draw those linebackers back in. A lot of free snap motion by Tennessee. And you'll see Tony Robinson calling a lot of plays at the line of scrimmage today. Third straight running throw, Keith Davis. A little bit of running room to the 41 yard line a gain of about five yards before Wayne Davis number 58 the inside linebacker makes the stop for Ray Perkins Crimson Tide Ray Perkins feels this team is special he says that over and over again feels like it's not got the great great players with the exception of Cornelius Bennett but uh, a lot of character throughout the squad it is second down six from the 41 yard line of Tennessee three wide receivers in Typical passing play for Tennessee, but they're going to run it again. They hand it off to 
Howard, the fullback, who stumbles and gets only a couple of yards. So Tennessee electing to keep it on the ground. And Tim, as you say, it may be because that's what Alabama's defense is giving them thus far. I think so. Randy Rockwell is, is spreading out. He's uh, out in the position where he can jam the wide receiver. I think they're a little bit concerned about uh, Britt Cooper on the corner going one-on-one one -on -one against Eric Swanson or Timmy McGee. Three wide outs again. Third down four from the 43. It's complete to Clay Scales. He's close to the first down. Tackled by 21, Freddie Robinson. It'll depend on the mark of the football. Tony Robinson signaling to the sideline that there is a first down, and so does the referee. First down, Tennessee. You get a chance to watch this again. This ball should never have been completed. Basically, it was thrown against a two-deep, five-short zone, which meant the cornerback should have been up close in that flat area. Robinson makes the read. <laughs> Look at that. He gets it out there in a hurry. I don't think we can blame Freddie Robinson too much for not breaking that ball up because you saw the velocity which with Tony fired the football. First down 10. Tennessee at the 47-yard line of the Volunteers. Opening drive for Tennessee. Opening quarter of play from Lincoln Field in Birmingham. Robinson goes down. Number 79, Brent Stoll. This defense is tough in the opening quarter. They have not allowed a touchdown. Tennessee now with a second 21 from the 36-yard line. direction they hand the ball to 32 Charles Wilson from Pritchard Alabama by the way third down 22 from the 35 yard line Robinson four man rush Robinson in a lot of trouble down he goes at the 27 yard line and listen to this Legion field crowd excuse me prevented Robinson from throwing that intermediate cut that he was looking for here's Bob Garman who had trouble punting last week only averaging 38 yards he's punting to Albert Bell number one at his 31 Bell to the 38 yard line good field position for Alabama last week against Florida the Gators started on an average drive at their 38 it's something Johnny Major said he hoped to avoid today but field position could play a role there is a penalty marker on the field that was a 42 yard punt and a nine yard return by Albert Bell of Alabama interception and two fumbles hard to believe that they've only turned the ball over three times first down 10 from the 46 of Tennessee Shula is going to throw batted down at the line of scrimmage incomplete he was looking for Bobby Humphrey out of the backfield I think Fred Bennett number 95 the middle guard got a hand on the ball for the Tennessee Volunteers there's that Tennessee defense Scott Bennett Mark Hovannik Hovannik a good pass rusher there for the linebacker position Brian Kimbrough playing for the injured Tyrone Robinson Dale Jones the big play man number 54 you'll be seeing a lot of him today you'll also see a lot of number seven Chris White he's around the ball a great deal the three safety for Tennessee for Alabama second down ten from the 46 of the Volunteers, scoreless football game. Bell in motion. Here's Humphrey. To the 42-yard line of Tennessee. Freshman Bobby Humphrey from Birmingham grew up in the shadows. i in this neighborhood recruiting that young man. Happy he did. Third down, six Alabama at the 42 of Tennessee. Scoreless game, first quarter. Hewlett try his second pass of the day. Incomplete, looking for Humphrey. Thrown high, would have been a tough catch, covered by number seven, Chris White. The Shula's 0 for 2 throwing the football, something you rarely see. And you also, something you rarely see is, is Shula throwing more passes than Robinson. Tony Robinson's only thrown once. Alabama can't convert and can't make anything really happen out of excellent field position. Their punter is Chris Moore, a freshman from Thompson, Georgia. And there is number one, Andre Kramer. He broke a kickoff return against Alabama last year that played a big role in Tennessee's come from behind victory. Looks like it's going into the end zone and does for the touchback. It'll come out to the 20-yard line, a 42-yard punt by Chris Moore. And the Volunteers will go on offense for the second time this afternoon. This could be a defensive struggle, even though Tennessee's explosive offensively. We'll see what Robinson and company have in mind when we return. This is alma mater trails Ohio State by two touchdowns. They'll come back. They're yeah, playing well this year. Just letting them feel good for a while, setting them up. <laughs> Tennessee. From their own 20-yard line, dodged a field position bullet when Alabama failed to convert. Had the ball first and 10 at Tennessee's 46. Tennessee 
continuing to run the ball out to the 25-yard line. William Howard is hit by 58 Wayne Davis. Davis' third tackle of this young game. A couple of other scores. Notre Dame leading 20th-ranked Army 7 to nothing. When was the last time Army was ranked above Notre Dame? Well, of course, a lot of rumors about Jerry Faust and him needing to win the next two games to keep the job. There you see the other score from the ACC. Second down, five from the 25, Tennessee. They're going to run it again to the freshman, Keith Davis. He gets to the 27-yard line and not much further, bringing up another conversion play. This freshman, Davis, has stepped in here and taken the starting uh, tailback position. Pete Panuska had been playing that role, some Charles Wilson also. But Keith Davis is the kind of runner who just stepped in, and he they say probably running back, Tim, is the quickest position for a young man to be able to break into a game because it's just pure talent. Right, it is. And it's just that they've got the skill, and it's just a matter of understanding the blocking schemes. Third down three, Tennessee, out of the eye. Three wide receivers in the game. It's to Davis. Needs a block and gets it. First down. To the 40-yard line goes the freshman, Randy Rockwell, number 57, with the stop for Alabama. So Tennessee moving the ball, but remember, this happened on the first drive, and it was right about here where Tennessee stalled. We're going to watch the Tennessee receivers block on this play. It's something that you don't often see. Receivers don't get involved in the contact on a lot of football teams, but for Tennessee, they talk a lot that, about that a lot. Kippy Brown, the receiver coach, stresses that, and uh, they do a fine job with it. Charles Wilson also got a good block on the play. It's a 13-yard run by Davis. Robinson's going upstairs, looking for McGee. It picked off the first interception of the year for this Alabama secondary. Down at the... And a half. Position, however, puts Alabama in a hole at the eight and a half yard line. For young Mike Schulich, he has three wide receivers in there on a first down ten. Only about a couple of yards for fullback Craig Turner. Turner and Humphrey will play most of the way at the running back positions, but Alabama has some other strong backs too. Chester Braggs, Murray Hill, Gene Jelks, Mike Bobo. We'll see probably six or seven Alabama backs before this game ends. Tennessee's secondary is doing doing an excellent job, Bob, of disguising their coverages. They're not letting Mike Shula see what they're in until the ball is being snapped. Second down eight from the 11. Scoreless game, first quarter. Bobby Humphrey. To the 14-yard line. And down goes the freshman. There's Tony Robinson. Robinson one out of two for only five yards, and of course he threw that interception. He's on the phone with his mentor, Walt Harris. Walt uh, hosted Illinois, coach Steve Wilson and Tony Eason. <laughs> uh, maybe Tony was placing a call to uh, the other Robinson, Freddie. <laughs> That's it, Freddie. Good play. Freddie says, Tony, I already answered your call. Third down five from the 14-yard line. In motion out of the backfield, Bobby Humphrey. Schulich, the shovel pass. The turn of the fullback. Shy of, well, excuse me, he got the first down. He's shy of the 20, but he got enough of the first down. Depending on the spot of the ball. Opposite, it's simply an incomplete pass. First down 10 from the 19. Here's Humphrey. Tough yardage over there on the right side, about three or four. Tommy Sims, number 16, coming up from the safety position. Tennessee will play Davis, White, Sims a lot at the year in the SEC. Has been injury plagued since then. We wish that young man well. Second down five from the 24. Nothing going this time. Gain of maybe one for Humphrey. Mark Hovannik from Yorktown, Virginia, with the tackle for Tennessee. Ray Perkins started his coaching career at Mississippi State went to the Patriots and then the San Diego Chargers and then was picked tabbed by George Young one of the fine minds in professional football a general manager of the New York Giants to lead his giant football team and then taking the job at Alabama doing a great job seven ties in this series some the, the average score in the last four years has been 32 31 first down run by Humphrey he was tackled by 16 Tommy Sims we're going to our studios in Atlanta now for this college football update <laughs> first down 10 Alabama at the 29 yard line they started this drive after the interception at the eight and a half out of the eye Shula the throw wide open Greg Richardson down at the 45 of Alabama. Charlie Davis with the stop. Mike's dad, Don, who's watching down in Miami at halftime, if that works out. Craig Turner running on the right side for about four. 
out near the midfield stripe for the fullback. Tim Foley's favorite coach, I know, is Don Shula. Ray Perkins played for Don Shula while he was at Baltimore. Old Perk. Got a lot of footballs in an Alabama jersey. Still holds the record for most yards receiving in the Orange Bowl and in the Sugar Bowl. Second down six from the 49-yard line. The Tide driving from their eight and a half. Here's Bobby Humphrey. Tennessee pursuing well, but look at that young man cut against the grain. Inside volunteer territory, about three yards short of the first down. Fred Bennett and Tommy Sims with the stop. The man that makes the play here is Dale Jones, number 54. Watch this. Watch him take on the guard, stuff the guard, stay parallel to the line of scrimmage, get rid of the blocker, and now get to the football. Turns the play back in. Doesn't actually make the tackle, but fine play by Dale Jones. It's third down three from the 48-yard line of Tennessee. 3.09 to go, quarter number one, scoreless ball game. Albert Bell in motion. And contact at the line of scrimmage. That was 95, Fred Bennett with the contact. Once that line is set, the center cannot move the ball again. Sometimes it's against the center for moving it. We'll see. Offside, Tennessee. Nope, the guilty finger of justice points at Fred Bennett. We're going to pause five seconds for station identification. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Legion Field, Birmingham, Alabama, 3.09 to go. Quarter number one, Football. Alabama nothing, Tennessee nothing. Defensive offside. First down. That was enough for the first down. They spot the ball at the 43 of Tennessee, and Alabama continues this drive. <laughs> kind of credit Mike Shula for that one, that voice inflection, the ability to draw the defense offside. Hand off to the fullback, Turner. Nowhere to go. Maybe a yard. Kelly Ziegler, one of the inside linebackers for Tennessee. Tennessee's linebackers starting this game are Dale Jones on the outside and Brian Kimbrough with Ziegler and Darren Miller in the middle. Kelly Ziegler, he's out of Miami, Florida. Went to Palmetto High School. Played down there for Jess Davis. They're replacing Tolls and Xander. They were about as good a pair of inside linebackers as we saw last year, Tim. And they're both playing in the NFL now. Second down eight. Alabama from the 41 of Tennessee. Shula under pressure. Gets it away to Turner. Turner hit at the 40 and stopped shy of the 40-yard line. Tommy Sims playing Craig Turner very well out of the backfield and good pressure by Dale Jones. He was just all over Mike Shula. Well, Jones is blitzing on this play. You're going to see him coming in from your left to the right. Just a play action coming out there uh, in a sense naked. Knows that if it's a blitz, guy has to get rid of it right away. That's one that Shula has to read. Big conversion play for Alabama here. Third down eight from the 41 of Tennessee. Five defensive backs in for the Volunteers. The 12th play of this drive, which started at the eight and a half yard line of Alabama. Shula with an audible at the line. Tennessee blitzing. Shula throw it. Incomplete. And the Alabama drive stalls. At the 41 yard line of Tennessee, Clay Whitehurst was the intended receiver. He's being covered by 14 Terry Brown. Tennessee's giving them a little bit different look on defense. They're doubling the wide receiver, Albert Bell. And then they're leaving Tommy Sims open in the middle to pick up that check down route or that slant in route that Swanson was trying to run. There's Chris Moore. Chris Moore is a freshman from Thompson, Georgia. He's had a good year punting, 42 yards on his first one, trying to get this one out of bounds. He does not. Punts it in and out of the end zone from the 41, so we'll credit him with a 41-yard punt. We'll be back in just a moment. We're in the first quarter with only 126 remaining. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. CAA college broadcasters in receiving for the third straight year. First down 10 from the 20-yard line. Scoreless ball game. Tennessee ball. They hand it to freshman Keith Davis again. Good cut. First down to the 33-yard line. And this freshman, Keith Davis, is a workhorse. That's his fifth carry of the day, and he's got nearly 40 yards. Tennessee's lining up with three wide receivers. They're running to the side of the two wide receivers. Randy Rockwell is kind of stretched out. You see him trying to fight his way back into the play. 
Now they're going to have to make a decision. If they continue to run the ball like that, they're going to have to bring Randy Rockwell closer to the, the ball. First down, 10 from the 33. They give it to Keith Davis again to about the 36-yard line. This freshman is six feet tall, 190, which is really almost the prototype size for a tailback. He, he's big enough, and there's Smokey, the blue tick hound mascot of the Tennessee Volunteers. Second down, seven from the 36 yard line, Volunteers. Three wideouts in the game now for Tennessee. Audible at the line. Clean scale, whoa, couldn't hold on to it, and Freddie Robinson had an opportunity for an interception with nothing but green in front of him, but the ball was tipped out of bounds and goes incomplete. So this Tennessee passing game isn't exactly untracked. Robinson one out of four for only five yards and one interception thus far. Good job in the secondary by Alabama. They've got a good scheme. You don't, you don't permit a touchdown to be scored from you against you, excuse me, in the first quarter without having good coaching and good preparation. There you see Ronnie Zook. He's a defensive secondary coach for uh, Tennessee talking to his players. Third and seven from the 36. Alabama with a rush right up the middle. Green to the left side to Wilson. To the 45-yard line. He's close enough for a Tennessee first down. First down volunteers. Good run after the catch by the sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama. And a good block by Joey Klinkscale. Kind of freed up Davis. Permitted him to get that yardage. Bruin and Galbraith out front, out in front of that play. Here you see Johnny Majors. He's got himself a fine football team this year. A lot of senior talent on offense. From the 45-yard line of Tennessee, first down, 10 ball. Scoreless game, closing moments of the first quarter. Keith Davis. That's a good block. He gets about four yards out near midfield. As we come to the end of the first quarter at Legion Field in Birmingham, 75,808. They are jammed in here today for one of the premier football rivalries in the nation. This is Turner Network Television. For our stations along the line, we've missed commercial position six, and our next commercial will be number seven. And we'll make up the missed spot in the next quarter. Today's game is being brought to you in part by the new Valvoline Guard, the motor oil for today's harder-working four-cylinder engine. Opening play of the second quarter, scoreless ball game. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Legion Field in Birmingham, Tennessee, and Alabama. Keith Davis hit in backfield. Oh, and buddy, he was hit. John Hand weighs 275. Stand six feet seven a senior from Sylacauga and he'll be a first round draft choice in the pros he is a big fella saw him the other night in drink six and our next commercial will be number seven and we'll make up the missed spot in the next quarter ball game Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Legion Field in Birmingham Tennessee and Alabama Keith Davis hit in the backfield. Oh, and buddy, he was hit. John Hand weighs 275. Speaking of dreamland, Keith May, <laughs> he was hit. Third down eight from the 47, Tennessee. Good protection for Robinson. Dumps it to Keith Davis. Look at his speed for the freshman. Out of bounds at the 28-yard line of Alabama, Ricky Thomas. Chasing Davis out of bounds. That was a 25-yard reception and run for the freshman. Having himself a good game. He wasn't hurt that much by the tackle. I think this is what scares the defensive coaches the most, Bob. His ability to maneuver in the pocket by time. He gets it to Keith Davis. Br breaks the perimeter of the defense to the wide side of the field. And if it's not great hustle by Ricky Thomas, might have gone all the way. Definitely Tennessee's deepest Ooh. penetration. They had to punt the first time, threw an interception last time. From the 28, first down 10. Here's Charles Wilson. Inside the 20 to the 19-yard line goes the sophomore, 32, Charles Wilson, alternating with Keith Davis out of the backfield, the tailback spot.
What Tennessee is doing is pulling two linemen to the side of the two receivers. McGee is doing a good job of getting in the path of Brandy Rockwell, preventing him from closing it down tight. So they're getting those six, eight yard gains. Second down two at the 20. Robinson up with a audible. Sometimes he calls a whole new play. Sometimes he just checks off a pattern or something. He does that a lot. Oh, in trouble. Incomplete, short hopped, intended for number nine, Vince Carter. But that's something that Tony Robinson does so well. There was great pressure by 78 John Hand, but it's hard to get a hand on Tony Robinson. This time, Freddie Robinson, the cornerback, set him up a little bit, lined up a little bit deeper. Robinson felt like he could get that quick out in there, that quick pop. When the ball was snapped, Freddie was coming and prevented Robinson from throwing the ball. He had to bring it back down and was fortunate to avoid a sack. Big conversion here. Tennessee's four out of five on third down. It's third down two at the 20 of Alabama. They're going to run the ball. They give it to big pull by Howard. It's close. I don't know if he got it or not. They need to go to the 18-yard line. There's William Howard, who's a sophomore from Lima, Ohio. Alternates a fullback with Big Sam Henderson. They're going to bring the sticks in to measure. It's very close. If Tennessee has to go for a field goal, they have a very good young kicker by the name of Carlos Reves, who's replacing his brother, Fouad, who was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. There you see the measurement. It's short by about three, four inches. Johnny Majors has elected to go for it on fourth down at the 18 and a half yard line. Critical play in the early moments of the second quarter. Johnny Majors gambling at the 18 and a half yard line of Alabama. The crowd getting into it now. I want to feel like they like Wilkerson in short yardage, but they're also going to be conscious of where Cornelius Bennett lines up. Robinson says yes. Tennessee fans say yes. Alabama fans say no. <laughs> Johnny Major said, I'll wait and see. William Howard carried the ball. You Henderson and Panuska and Davis were back there with it. You saw what happened there, Bob. They went on a long count. They tried to get it for free. Robinson tried to jump the Alabama defense. Good job by Alabama watching the ball, not jumping off sides. Here come the sticks. I'll stretch it out and you'll get a good view if we can get those guys to move their legs there. You see Tony Robinson with his sweatbands around his ankles. <laughs> his ankles about the size of a lot of people's wrists. Here it comes. First down by the nose of the ball. Let's take a look at it. Robinson's at the line of scrimmage barking out the signals. The offensive linemen fire out. Good penetration by the Alabama defense. It's hard to play it any better than that. Joe Godwin coming over the top. Good job by both teams on that play. First down, Tennessee. We saw four or five fourth down gambles in our FSU Auburn telecast last week, and now we've seen one early in the second quarter here that paid off for Johnny Majors. First and ten from the 18. Here's Keith Davis. What an excellent job of running the ball for the young freshman. Down to the seven and a half yard line. He was tackled by 20 Britton Cooper and 57 Randy Rockwell. Right in front of the Tennessee cheering section. Missouri out in front of Nebraska. Everything going right for Missouri these days with the World Series. And now they're leading Nebraska early. Ohio State handling Purdue 17-0 second quarter. How about that one? The Ragin' Cajuns at Gainesville, Florida are handing the Gators a standoff in the second quarter. Here, first down goal from the eight for Tennessee. Scoreless game, second quarter. Robinson changing the play. Alabama calling timeout. Wisely so. It was Cornelius Bennett who looked to the sideline and did that. Bennett definitely the leader of that Alabama defensive team. Johnny Majors will have a chance to think it over a little bit, too. It's first and goal from the eight. We'll be right back. Birmingham, Alabama. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. It's first and goal from the eight for Tennessee. They started at their 20. This is the 13th play of the drive. Looking for Clint Scales. He was hit in the end zone. Clint Scales was hit by the defensive back. 34, Ricky Thomas, and penalty markers went down. 
looks like Alabama defensive pass interference in the end zone. They were looking for clink scales. Robinson just threw a, I don't know, Tim, what do you call that? A fade? That's correct. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> Basically what that means, a wide receiver just trying to fade to the corner of the end zone. No really described cutter route. Just run away from the defensive back. Clink scale starting to wait for the ball. The defensive back at that point is beat. What he should try to do is get his head and shoulders around, locate the football. Here's the announcement on the penalty. Ray Perkins unhappy, of course. Defensive pass interference. First down. Inside the 20-yard line, they spot that ball at the two-yard line on defensive pass interference because obviously they can't give them the 15-yard penalty from the eight. So instead of half the distance, they take it to the two-yard line. There it is, first and goal, Tennessee. Scoreless game, 12 minutes to go, second quarter. Double tight ends for the Volunteers. They give it to the fullback. It's William Howard to about the half-yard line. Denied the goal line, but he's about a half a yard away. It'll be second down goal. This Alabama defense has, we say they're the bend but don't break. They've bent as far as they'll be allowed to bend now. No breaking allowed inside the one. They spotted at the one, by the way. They played well all year, Bob. Joe Kynes and his assistants have done a nice job with the Alabama defense, especially considering Cornelius Bennett has not been available with the exception of the first game. Davis and Henderson in the eye. Wilson now lines up as a wing for a power formation. And there's timeout for Tennessee. Don't say this isn't a big game to everybody. The nerves are on edge for the coaches, the players, and the fans. We'll be right back. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Davis in motion. Here's a pitch to Wilson. Touchdown, Volunteers. drive for the Volunteers. They started at their 20. First score in this ball game, Tennessee 6, Alabama nothing. Carlos Reves is in for the point after attempt. Big play, Bob, was a little uh, check down to Keith Davis. He caught it and went a long way. It should have been a six-yard gain. He turned it into about a 30-yarder. Point after is good. 7 to nothing. Tennessee had control of the ball for five minutes and 14 seconds on that drive. We'll be back to Legion Field in Birmingham right after this. Robinson directed these volunteers on an 80-yard drive in 14 plays, and this is the scoring play. See that hand coming out of the top right of your picture? They're changing a the coverage. You get the defense thinking about something else instead of being aggressive, and here's what happens. Dave Douglas, a good block. Harry Galbraith, nice block there. Leading the way. Knocking Alabama back into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. And they ran right past Cornelius Bennett, who, Bennett, who was kicked out of there with a good block. Here's Reves for the kickoff. Tennessee leads 7-0, 11-12 to go first half of play. Reves was not quite as strong the leg as his brother, but that's pretty strong to the back of the end zone. Bobby Humphrey. He'll touch it down, and Alabama trailing now. will take over the ball for the third time this afternoon. They went four yards on their first possession, 50 on their second one, but both times had to punt the ball. There's the scoring drive details for you. Tennessee fans in a corner of Legion Field, right behind the graphic you see on your screen there. They can raise a lot of ruckus. You read the newspaper here. They love to see them come to Birmingham. They say the volunteers buy more souvenirs than anybody in the conference. Murray Hill, 45, and 44, Craig Turner is running back for Alabama now. There's Murray Hill, the freshman. To the 31-yard line. Murray Hill from Atmore, Alabama. Of course, Bobby Humphrey. They're going to be solid there for the next three years. It'll be first down 10, Alabama, at the 31-yard line of the Crimson Tide. Slot left formation, backs in the eye. Murray Hill looked like he didn't know exactly where to go there. Let's see if he does now. He knows where to go this time. 
for the 42-yard line. The freshman Kelly Ziegler, number 49, with a tackle. Formation slot left. First down, 10 Alabama at the 42 of the tide this time. Tennessee leading 7 to nothing. Here we go again with him. More running room. About seven yards this time. Close to the midfield stripe. They'll spot it right near the 50-yard I worked out yesterday. He just ruins my image in the series final. He was happy with that win over Vanderbilt, of course. And it's first down Alabama. They give to Craig Turner, 44, the fullback. And he drives inside Tennessee territory if Kerry Good could not play at tailback. You see, they haven't been that down. Here comes Hill again. This time hit behind the line. He struggles up to the line of scrimmage. Initial hit was Tommy Sims. By the way, number 16 for Tennessee has seven tackles already in this game out of the safety position. That time the linebackers for Tennessee both did an excellent job of stringing the play up, out and preventing the running back from getting that north-south lane early. Gave the defensive backs him a chance to get up in the play. Hill has four carries for 29 yards. He's the leading rusher for Alabama so far. It's all been in this drive. Second down 10. 45 of Tennessee. Shula looking for Turner. Incomplete. Turner out of the backfield. Had a little bit of running room. Close to the first down. But Shula just didn't have it right on his hands that time. And the one-handed attempt just didn't convert for Craig Turner. A good receiver uh, coming out of the backfield. He had seven catches coming into this game. Ray Perkins talking to George Hen Henshaw, the offensive coordinator up in the booth. That time they picked a play pass. Tennessee's defense got good depth, took away the intermediate routes. Turner was open, and uh, I'm sure Ray's going to ask him why he didn't use his left hand with his right hand in that attempted reception. Third down 10. The tied drive is stalled momentarily at the 45-yard line of Tennessee. Shula needs 10 here. He's going for a lot more. He has Richardson wide open at the 10. To the one-foot line, Greg Richardson. Second quarter, Tennessee leads 7-0. Alabama, fullback, Turner, touchdown, tied. here Alabama fires off the ball Turner up in the air over the plane of the end zone touchdown air Turner for Alabama they pull to within one of Tennessee 7-6 with eight minutes and one second remaining of course the key play that 44 yard pass reception to Greg Richardson Van Tippen for the point after well Alabama sure did counter it's like two heavyweights slugging it out here point after is good they just jabbed and bobbed and weaved in the first round. We come to the second round or second quarter here, and all of a sudden they're throwing haymakers. Two 80-yard drives, and we have a tie game at Legion Field in Birmingham. This is Turner Network Television. <laughs> ourselves a good one here in Birmingham today. Critical game for both teams, but particularly so for Tennessee, as the Volunteers already have one loss in the SEC, losing last week 17-10 to Florida. Here's Pete Panuska at the three. To the 22 or 23 yard line. Last year, Tim McGee was the hero of the game when Tennessee came from behind. We talked to him about that and about Tennessee prior to the game. They were playing the two deep zone and they had an end walked out on me and we seen a little open area and we needed some big plays to get back in the game because we were down by a lot of points and fortunately Tony spotted me right on the sideline and I was wide open and things just clicked right there. That was the touchdown that led the way to the comeback. Johnny Jones scored the winning touchdown for Tennessee on a come from behind in Knoxville last year. Tennessee on a three-game winning streak. Tied 7-7 here on the first down. Robinson throws as he's hit. That's Clink Scales. He may be gone out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Ricky Thomas dragged him out of bounds. Clink Scales couldn't get it into high gear. He got it in first and second, but he had a little trouble with third, and that's when he was hauled out of bounds. And uh, he looks like he pulled up lame. Quick screen out here to the wide receiver. Timmy McGee helping Wall off. You're going to see Dave Douglas, number 78, and number 76, Harry Galbraith out in front. Clink scale slows down, trying to let the lineman get out in front of him and also try to get to the sideline. He limped off the field. First down 10, Tennessee at the 45-yard line of Alabama. 
Here's Keith Davis. Picking his way. What an excellent run by the freshman, Ricky Thomas, with the tackle. There wasn't much there for number 28, but he picked his way through. There's Clink Scales. He looked like he pulled up with a cramp or something when he ran out of bounds. Here comes Keith, Keith Davis limping off the field. Very fine, uh, a run that you'd expect from an older running back. Just showed a lot of patience. Most players, as soon as they get to that hole, they take off. And he was just very patient, waiting for that guard to get up in front and follow him along. His twin scale look at his ankle. The left ankle. First down 10, Tennessee at the 31-yard line of Alabama. They give it to Charles Wilson. He dives inside the 30 to about the 27-yard line. Charles Wilson is a sophomore from Pritchard who's been alternating at that tailback position for Davis. But Keith Davis, starting his first game today, limped off to the sideline. They're looking at him. We'll get a report. Has been really the key runner for Tennessee. 68 yards and 10 carries as he went off. And there's Davis, 28. They're looking at him. Looks to be okay just as a casual observer on the sideline. Wilson remains in it back. Second down six volunteers at the 27 of Alabama. Alabama in that 3-4. They hand to the fullback, William Howard, who is about three or four yards short of the first down. He needs to go to the 21. He got two or three. Another Tennessee player is down, down here about the 24-yard line. Pro ranks at University of Tennessee. Johnny Majors has coached them all over the place, but you know a bunch of them. Willie Galt playing for the Bears. Stanley Morgan with the Patriots. Clyde Duncan with the Cardinals, Anthony Hancock, Mike Miller, Daryl Wilson, the list goes on and on. Third down four. And contact at the line on a quarterback draw. Robinson dives for the first down. By the way, there was a penalty marker down there, we said, and the official picked it up So prior to that play, so there was no call on the play. There was contact before the snap. Robinson got enough yardage for the first down. What will happen in that situation, Bob, as the official explains the offsides call? They're calling procedure against Tennessee. It was third and four. They'll tag five on and make a third and nine. Let's just watch it again. It... Robinson jumps Alabama. And off in the center will snap the ball when a defender penetrates the procedure. neutral zone. Offense, still third down. And uh, unless the official saw something we didn't see, we'll have to agree with Johnny Majors on that one. Not very happy about the call. Tennessee now goes from a third and four and what would have been a first down to a third down nine. They move the ball back to the 30-yard line. 6.03 to go. Second quarter tied at seven. Robinson. Looked right. Throws left, incomplete. He was trying to find Wesley Pryor, number 23, who's in there in place of the injured Swanson and the injured Clink Scales. By the way, we understand, and Tennessee doesn't convert, we understand that Clink Scales has injured his left ankle, but will probably play again, according to the report from the sideline. So Tennessee has it fourth down nine at the 30, and they send in Carlos Reves for a 47-yard field goal attempt. We're going to give Britt Cooper a credit for doing a good job of coverage on that last play, forcing this field goal. Plenty of leg on that one. It's wide to the left side. The game remains tied. 7-7. Reves missed a 47-yarder. That's the first time he's missed inside the 49-yard line all year long. And Mike Shula comes in here, four out of eight for 66 yards. Johnny Majors wishing maybe brother Fuad was still kicking for Tennessee instead of Miami right now. Tennessee gets about two or three yards off the right side, not much more. All have made major contributions to the Dolphins' success. Alabama, second down eight at the 32-yard line of the tie. 5-16 to go, first half. Shula. Rifles it in, incomplete, intended for Clay Whitehurst, the sophomore from Nashville, Tennessee. Couldn't hold on to it. There's the Tennessee offensive unit on the sideline. Can't see who that is talking to him, Bob. I don't know if that's Phil Fulmer down there. Or, no, it's Cutfoot. Dave Cutfoot. Trying to get some things squared away. Third down eight, Alabama from the 32. 
This is that pro set formation. Split back, wide receivers out wide to the left and right side, and one tight end. Shula has a man wide open. Whitehurst, nice grab, first down. First down. Alabama out here to good field position now to their own 48, and Shula's going to wing it again. It's picked off number 22. The ball is Charlie Davis. Down at the 39-yard line. The junior from New Paltz, New York, picks off Shula after the ball was tipped and returned at 12 yards. I believe it was tipped by Terry Brown, and he was looking for Thornton Chandler, the tight end, number 81, as we take a look at it again. Big turnover. We watched the Ron Zook's uh, Tennessee secondary again. Tries to throw that zone pattern to Chandler. This time he's a little late on it. He has been successful. We saw him against Vanderbilt, against Penn State, was successful getting the ball to Chandler. This time the ball is a little late. A risky throw, tip, interception, Charlie Davis. First down, 10 volunteers from their own 39-yard line. Robinson calling play at the line, repositioning his backs, and he hands off to the fullback. About three yards for Charles Wilson. Actually, the tailback playing out of a split back position. Mike mentioned that that's only the second interception of the year for Mike Shula and only the fourth turnover for Alabama as their goal this year was to play mistake free football and have done it most of the time. Second down seven from the 42 for the balls now. Three wideouts in there for Tennessee. They give to the up man of the eye. That was Charles Wilson, who's playing the fullback position. You see Davis, the man with the interception on the sideline, talking to the defensive coaches. So we have Keith Davis in at tailback, and Charles Wilson was in at the fullback position. He now goes out, and William Howard comes in at fullback. And Wilson, playing with a sore shoulder, can play both positions. Third down two from the 47 Tennessee. Here's Keith Davis. Played his blocks well. And he drives near the 40-yard line of Alabama, tackled by 95, Kurt Jarvis. Alabama player is down about midfield. So Alabama was driving, and until that interception, Tennessee looked like they were going to have some problems. But look at the run by the freshman. They trap away from Cornelius Bennett. And uh, as Tony Williams comes back to cut him off, they did a nice job of trapping John Hand on that play. Davis, again, a patient runner, displaying a lot of discipline Waited for the hole to open, then took it back up inside. That's Wayne Davis on the ground. Eight, top left of your screen. Sowell cuts down to the outside. Davis waits, reads, guard going away. He gets caught up. Uh, looked like the center roll blocked him, and he got hit from the other side uh, at, the si at the same time. Well, significant uh, injury for Alabama. We'll report on the severity of that injury as soon as we find out from the sideline. Meantime, let's find out who came in to replace him there at that linebacker position. It's Lydell Mitchell, number 15, a sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama. We'll go in there. First and 10, Tennessee at the 41-yard line of Alabama. We're tied at 7. Second quarter, Robinson in trouble. Screens it right side to Charles Wilson, who gets the first down to the 29-yard line. Actually, that was not a screen, but he, um, let's call it a safety valve to Charles Wilson on the right side. Bennett with good pressure. Let's watch uh, Bennett and his role. Reed's head up, waiting for a screen draw. Not there. Hats up. All the way across the field, here's Cornelius Bennett making the stop. He... A tremendous athlete, huh, Bob? Absolutely. You know, Ray Perkins has said he believes he's as good at this stage of his career as Lawrence Taylor was. And Perkins coached Taylor with the Giants. First down 10 at the 29, Tennessee. Here's Keith Davis again. Not much this time. A yard, if that, to about the 28-yard line. Joe Godwin, the linebacker for Alabama, wears number 90, made the tackle. We're tied at 7. 3-10 to go first half. We thought this might be a defensive struggle. Uh, even though both teams have potent offenses, and Tennessee's can really explode on you. Ray encouraging his defense. You know, Tennessee's drive was an 80-yard drive, took almost six minutes. And if you're going to score on this defense, that's how you're going to have to do it. Johnny Majors and Walt Harris have to be patient in their play, select play selection and just take what Alabama gives you. Second down nine from the 29. Tennessee started this drive at their 39-yard line. Robinson. Incomplete. 
He was looking for number 23, Wesley Pryor, sophomore from DeSoto, Texas. Pryor came off a knee injury in the spring and hasn't played very much this year, but Klingscales hurt his ankle. Swanson was shaken up earlier. And we're down to Vince Carter, Wesley Pryor, and Tim McGee most of the time here on this drive. Last year, McGee had a great year, 54 catches, Tennessee record, and there was really no one to draw the attention away from him. The man's got remarkable ability, tremendous quickness off the cut. Third down nine, Tennessee. That's the 29 of Alabama. Four-man rush, they hand off on the draw. This is Keith Davis. Close to the first down, but he doesn't get there. Unless he fell forward for enough, I don't believe he did. He has to get to the 19-yard line. Good run by the youngster, though, who's approaching the 100-yard mark. That's his 13th carry. They're going to spot it at about the 21. He's far short of the first down. And Davis has 88 yards and 13 carries. So Tennessee, I think they're going to go for it on fourth down again. Is that accurate? I believe the kicker's on the field, Bob. Yes, you know, he, he is. Went, they he, are not. He went once. <laughs> and, you know, there's, there's no sense in testing fate too many times. This will be... They're going to spot it at the 28. A 38-yard field goal attempt. Reves is perfect at that distance so far this year. He missed a 47-yarder earlier today. Hit this one well. And Reves gets this one on the board. So Tennessee takes the lead. 10-7 with a 38-yard field goal from Carlos Reves with 141 remaining in the first half. And Tennessee with a narrow lead. Field in Birmingham for one of the premier football rivalries in the nation, and it's been all it's been billed to be today. Tennessee with one SEC loss, Alabama with none. Critical, a very critical game for both teams, particularly Tennessee. Most people feel that two losses in the SEC will eliminate you from a chance to win the championship. There's Tony Robinson from Leon High School in Tallahassee, Florida. And Tim, what a great quarterback production they've had. Jordan and Woodham, of course, played at Florida State. And another player here, Moses Collins, now redshirt quarterback with the Volunteers. Right. Gene Cox does a great job down there at Tallahassee, Leon. And the funny thing about Robinson is nobody was really hot on him when he was a senior in high school. Had great production, good statistics, but he was just kind of tall and skinny and wasn't very assertive. They wondered if he could be a leader. And even for his first two years in Tennessee, playing behind Alan Cockrell, he didn't really have a chance to blossom, but he's here in full bloom now. Bobby Humphrey at the goal line. Gets some blocking. Tripped up at about the 23-yard line. That started looking dangerous for Alabama. But they tripped up Bobby Humphrey, and they will set up offense there, trailing Tennessee 10-7. So Mike Shula comes in now, and young Mike Shula is 5 out of 11 for 82 yards and one interception, his second of the year, that stopped the preceding drive. Tennessee took it at the 39 and drove down for the field goal. They've been fairly effective in two-minute drills this year against Georgia, against Penn State. Let's see what happens here, Bob. 134 remaining in the first half. That shovel pass to Craig Turner. He's up about eight yards up the middle. That was a kind of a floater on that shovel pass. A lot of people. We first half down near a minute. Out for the first down goes the Crimson Tide. That was Bobby Humphrey carrying the ball. Beautiful Birmingham. Welcome to the beautiful sunny south. Actually, it's clouding up a little bit. Beautiful day to start this game. It was 78 degrees at kickoff. And now the cloud cover has rolled in. The breeze has picked up, and it's a very pleasant afternoon. They say on the sign here at Legion Field across from the press box, Birmingham, football capital of the South. And when you're here for this game, you believe it. First and 10, Shula from the 35-yard line. Bobby Humphrey incomplete at the 40. Excellent coverage. Number one, Andre Kramer is all over. Bobby Humphrey, legally, according to the officials, tied fans with a little bit of a boo. Always a little always a little dangerous there when you stick those hands up in the receiver's face. That can be called. Ty doing a good job of protecting Shula. You gotta you have to try to get your head and sh head and shoulders around on this play. You've got to try to react to the ball. You can't just be face masking the man. If that's what they rule judge it as, that's pass interference. Second down 10 from the 35-yard line. 36 seconds remaining in the half. Tennessee leading by 10. Draw play. Bobby Humphrey gets a good block. Drives out here to the 43-yard line. Needs to go to the 45 for the first down. Make a first down. 
from this particular effort. Third and two from the 43. Let's see what Mike the Mind does here. He very intelligently gives it to his excellent running back, Bobby Humphrey, who gets the first down. He's 18, 17, clock counting in the first half. Screen to Turner. Nice draft. Doesn't have much running room. Does he get out of bounds? No, the clock continues to run. Seven, six. Alabama does have one timeout left if they choose to call it, and they do. With five seconds remaining in the half, they spot the ball at the 48-yard line of Tennessee. Inbounds or out of bounds, and uh, the signal was not forthcoming. His valuable seconds ticked off the clock. Johnny Majors has to be happy with his team's performance, especially defensively. They've come on strong defensively. Anybody that can limit Florida to 17 points has got to be playing good defense, and they've overcome some injuries and uh, just have made tremendous progress. In the fourth quarter of their first three games, they gave up 51 points in the fourth quarter of those three football games, and last week shut out Florida in the fourth quarter. The rambling, gambling defense of Tennessee. They uh, were gambling, I think, on that touchdown that tied the game in their opener with uh, UCLA. You live by it, you die by it. Right. They haven't blitzed much today, though. What about here? Possibly? I don't think so. <laughs> Second down five from the 48. And they're not. Shula has plenty of time. And he's going all the way to the end zone for Humphrey. Nothing there incomplete. And the clock goes down to double zeros. No penalty markers down. The first half comes to a close with Tennessee leading Alabama. 10-7 from Legion Field in Birmingham. A lot of halftime activities coming your way. Stay with us. Your spectacle in college football than Tennessee and Alabama, whether at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville or Legion Field here in Birmingham. And today, both bands will be performing. You'd think it would be a bowl game with all the activity around here. This is the University of Tennessee Pride of the Southland Band. Director is Dr. W.J. Julian. Drum major is Ed Nichols. This halftime show, they call it Great Country Music. band playing on the road again and a salute to country music at halftime at Legion Field in Birmingham. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you. We'll be back to join Craig Sager and Alec Hawkins in our studios in Atlanta for college football updates right after this. Tennessee leads 10-7. You can see it's been an even Stephen ball game. Keith Davis, the freshman running back for Tennessee, 
individually has outrushed the entire Crimson Tide running game. Davis has 88 yards of the 110 for Tennessee. Passing yardage about equal. Both teams have turned the ball over once. Tennessee unusually has possessed the ball uh, almost uh, about four and a half minutes longer than Alabama. Alabama wanted to play ball control. That's something that I'm sure that they would like to do better. And I almost lost my train of thought there as I saw my vision in the screen. It's Ken Fouts. I was complaining that Tim got all the um, halftime on camera. So thank you very much. My mother will thank you and so on and so forth. And we're ready now to show you pictures of what you really want to see, which are these players from Tennessee and Alabama. What a great first half. 10-7 Tennessee. And Tim, your comments on Cornelius Bennett. Do you feel he looked like he was playing up to his speed? Well, when you haven't played for three games, it certainly has got to hurt your productivity. But he's getting his feet on the ground, and they, they've got a nice plan for him to run away from him. Here comes Humphrey. Good kickoff return to the 33-yard line. Bobby Humphrey knocked out of bounds by number nine, Vince Carter. There you see what Alabama did in the first half. 180-yard deal. Mike Shula, the quarterback. Whitehurst, Chandler, Bell, the wide receivers. And here comes young Mike Shula. Seven out of 15 for 95 yards in the first half. Now Murray Hill in at the halfback position for Alabama. He gets the ball on a misdirection hit in the backfield. Nice penetration coming right up the middle by 65. Robbie Scott, 275-pounder from Decatur, Tennessee. They tried one of their Alan Tolles tricks with Robbie Scott. Tolles, a fullback, they moved him to linebacker, became a, an excellent player for him for a couple of years at linebacker. They tried Robbie Scott at center. That one didn't work out quite as well as they thought, and after some injuries, they moved him back to defense. He played well. Second down 12, Alabama at the 31-yard line. Sunshine peeking through now, as you can see. Mix up in the backfield, Murray Hill with the ball back to the original line of scrimmage. As Mike Shula faded back, he ran smack dab into his freshman running back, and Darren Miller and Brian Kimbrough made the stop. Murray Light. We're going to watch Dale Jones here. He's coming this time, working against Dave Johnson. Hoss Johnson comes back, drags to the ball, makes the play. He's a big playmaker for Tennessee, has been ever since he's a freshman, and really the, the bell cow of that particular defense. Although Ziegler is really playing well on the inside. Three wideouts in there for Alabama. And it's Murray Hill coming way out wide to the right side. Bell goes in motion on the third and ten. Unusual pattern. And it's incomplete. It would have been about a nine-yard completion. The penalty marker is down at the line of scrimmage. Intended for Big Thornton Chandler, the Alabama tight end, who is the classic prototype, pro type end. Chandler, 6'6", 240. There you see the officials discussing the infraction and the signal. Illegal motion. Alabama. Well, there is a lot of motion, that was for sure. You saw Murray Hill, it was declined on the incompletion. Murray Hill was splitting way out to the right side. And uh, that could have been some of it. And did they call offside against Tennessee Off, also? Offside, offside against against Tennessee. Tennessee. So they do it again. One thing that's really important for the Alabama offense is to win on first down. You know, they don't like to be in those second and long, third and long situations. They're, they're, a, they're a run first, throw second type of football team. This is third down 10, Alabama, at the 33-yard line. A little bit of confusion on this particular series. Now, there goes Hill out of the backfield again, much like last time. Maybe they just tried it again. Shula in trouble. Well, about three yards, but he was chased out of the pocket and tackled by Richard Cooper, the sophomore from Memphis, number 77. You see the picture of Tony Robinson. That was after the big Auburn game. They were all set. Sports Illustrated was all set to put Bo Jackson on that cover. But after the upset, it was touchdown Tony. Now a punting situation for Alabama. Chris Moore. That's a beauty. Good hang time. Kramer is going to let it bounce. Takes an Alabama bounce. Oh, what a bounce it does take to the 10-yard line. That's what they're trying to do. Alabama was trying to do in the first half and couldn't get it done. 55-yard punt. We'll be right back to Legion Field in Birmingham. Down 10, Tennessee from their own 10. Thanks for that 55-yard punt. They run it off right tackle for about three yards on the right side. That's freshman Keith Davis running the ball. And that's what Tennessee did in the first half. They had to punt, then they threw the interception, then the 80-yard touchdown drive, missed the field goal, and then came back after the interception by Charlie Davis off Mike Shula and got a 38-yard field goal 
from Carlos Reves and thus the 10 to 7 score with 12 28 to go third quarter of play this will be second down seven from the 13 Tennessee with three wide receivers in the game they're going to give to Davis again and he runs it to the middle nowhere oh my hand and Jarvis about 550 pounds of football players all over Keith Davis. You know, watch what a quick 270 pounds looks like. Quick arm over, gets right back into the flow of the action. How? Davis having himself an excellent day today. This is the most he's rushed for at this point in a ball game all year long. He had 102 versus Auburn and 102 versus Wake Forest. But he didn't have this many at this point. He's got a chance to break that. Third and six, Tennessee, from the 14. Robinson, plenty of time, but this is what he does so well. First down, Tennessee. We talked about it before the game, and that's something Johnny Major said, and Walt Harris told us, uh, Tim, that that's something that, that he brings to the quarterback position that most don't. Right, and he is a good runner. As we mentioned in the opening, a 39-yard run, he's got the longest run of any Tennessee back, and... And he doesn't just scramble and buy time or slide in there. He is a north-south scrambler, and he can make... I've seen film on him against Auburn, and uh, you know, he can make people miss. It's first down Tennessee from the 21. They had to start at their 10 after that Chris Moore 55-yard punt, but now up with a little breathing room just outside the corner. Pitch to Keith Davis. Gets a little hole for about three yards. Good block over there. Bruce Wilkerson made a nice block over that hole. Bruce Wilkerson at 6'5", 260, from Philadelphia, Tennessee. Is, I, I don't know, would you say so, Tim, the best offensive lineman for Tennessee? Oh, no question about it. He's come a long way, played some as a freshman, and uh, he just really grades out well every week. He's got everything you're looking for, the size and the feet and the intensity. Before we go any farther, I'd like to thank Don Shule again for taking the time out of his preparation for the Tampa game. We'll talk with us on the telephone. Second down eight from the 23. Robinson, a lot of time, screens right side to Davis. He gets the first down. Once again, I said screen. It really wasn't a screen. Davis was just the safety valve over there. The screen involves blockers. He had none. You're going to watch this again. Defensively, this is what you want it to look like. Get your linebackers out of there. Get some depth. Help in those intermediate patterns. Take them away. Now the ball's in the air. Respond to the ball. React to the football. Now make the tackle. If he makes a tackle, it's no first down. But uh, Phillips misses and first down Tennessee. Davis, 94 yards running, 35 yards receiving. Having himself a heck of an afternoon. First down Tennessee out of the 33. Here comes Davis again. Not much this time. Across the 35 to about the 36-yard line, though. That's his 17th carry of the day. That is a workhorse. Speaking of 17, it reminds me of Johnny Majors back in 1956. Majors in this Alabama-Tennessee game run, ran for 117 yards on 30 carries out of that single wing. We talked to him about it yesterday. And in 1957, finished second in the Heisman uh, vote, excuse me, Heisman Trophy voting to Paul Horning. He led his team that year to a 10-0 record, by the way, and Horning's team only won two games. A lot of controversy over that. Second down eight from the 35. Here's Tony Robinson. Gets a good block. Gets the first down. Out across the 45 to the 46. Tony Robinson with a Tennessee first down. Volunteers lead 10-7. Remember, Tennessee has one loss in the conference. Alabama's undefeated. Make a little action now. They take away the pitch right off the bat. A nice block there on Cornelius Bennett, it looked like, who is probably responsible for the uh, for the pitch man good block by Jeff Smith and Robinson takes it upfield nice game first and ten at the 45 yard line out of the eye play fake Robinson nice play to Charles Wilson first down Tennessee wrestled out of bounds on the far side by 56 Greg Gilbert depends on where they spot it let's see I believe it's a first down What's happening on that play action, Bob, is they're running off the two wide receivers. The one man's running straight down the field. The man in the slot is heading to the sideline, then up the field. The Alabama defender is turning his back on the football and running with the slot man, opening up that short zone. So when the ball is thrown, there's no one there to react to the ball to make the stop. As you see, they're having to measure it. Uh, it looked as though 
there was a Tennessee first down, but when they spotted the ball, it was moved back about a full yard from where I thought it originally went out of bounds, and it may be just an, an inch or two short of the first down. So it, nevertheless, though, it'll bring up uh, a second down in short yardage. Second down and just inches. And there's 97, Cornelius Bennett, junior from Birmingham. He, by the way, also grew up right here in this Legion Field area in Birmingham, on the west side of Birmingham. I imagine both he and Bobby Humphrey would sneak into college football games over here, right? Can you remember scaling the walls? I remember that, doing that down at Dyke Stadium in Northwestern. I always just tried to look poor and hungry and hope somebody would just invite <laughs> me in. They never did. I guess it's because I didn't look hungry enough. Second down and inches at the 45. Robinson pump fakes and goes for everything. Looking for McGee. Touchdown! What a catch by Tim McGee. There is a penalty marker on the play. The quarterback is down. There's a penalty marker in the Tennessee backfield. They may have rough Robinson, but they'll wave it off if that's the call. He's up and okay, and I think we've got a touchdown. I think, I think you'll see here in the end, McGee kind of concentration is broken by the great effort of the Alabama defensive backs. It's a curl and go. He just comes down and pops it out. Now up the field. Defensive back, turn, run. Make up ground. Get your head around. He does. Good job by Freddie Robinson. Thomas there to help out. He makes the catch. I thought never, he had it. Never maintained. I don't think he maintained What's control the of the ball long enough for it What's to count. Bad, but you know, I've got a defense. defensive attitude. Defensive bias. <laughs> and if you want six points, you got to hold on to the thing all the way down. But great concentration by Timmy McGee. Well, of course, you can you can argue that one forever. But it's the, does the ball, is the man in the end zone in possession of the ball? And we'll just be here, able to. Here there he has again. it. There he has it. There he has Hello. it. It looked like he was always kind of grabbing for it a little bit. Never really had a solid hold on it. Nevertheless, the roughing the quarterback penalty moves it to a first down at the 30-yard line, and back comes Tennessee. No game. That was Keith Davis. Stopped at the line of scrimmage. Ricky Thomas with the tackle. That time they ran it toward Cornelius Bennett as he came across the line of scrimmage. They had a wide receiver give him a little pop to enable that play to break outside. 7.35 to go third quarter. Tennessee leading 10-7. And a controversial call on the touchdown, no touchdown by McGee in the end zone. What would have been a great catch. It's now second down and actually a little longer than 10. We'll call it 11 yards. Robinson gets out of trouble and gets slammed to the ground by Cornelius Bennett. Bennett and Robinson have a real duel on, as you can see, Tony Robinson is holding his left shin. He was really popped by Cornelius Bennett. I'm going to watch Bennett on this replay. Coming off the ball. It's a screen pass, so Daryl Smith, number 57, is letting him go inside. They wanted to throw a screen back to the left side, not there. So Robinson throws it away at the feet of some offensive linemen. You saw him grab his leg in pain as he went down. When you take another look at this, this force, Bennett comes in and chases him. Watch the right lower leg of Tony Robinson right there when he came down on it. That's the point of the injury. He's still on the field. Here he comes. He's getting up now. See it again. And Bennett is in the flow. As far as uh, any roughness call there, he's in the... He's perfectly legal there. Robinson has to come out for one play because of the injury and senior Daryl Dickey the son of Tennessee's new athletic director Doug Dickey comes in to fill in for this one play but Robinson looks to be okay. The situation is this it will be third down 10 at the 30. I think Robinson's all right. The Alabama defense has been showing the muscle last few plays against Tennessee. Dickey's going to throw. Almost throws an interception. Ricky Thomas just dropped it. Oh, my. Talk about dodging a bullet. Oh, that'll bring up fourth down. And an opportunity for a field goal attempt by Carlos Reves. Like he 
called a check off. He was expecting a hitch from the wide receiver. And the, the, the receiver ran a uh, kind of a smash route to the inside. Confusion in the communications there. This will be a 47 or 48-yard field goal if it's successful. Plenty of distance. It is good. Tennessee, 13, Alabama, 7. Tennessee with a missed touchdown pass from Tony Robinson to McGee when McGee juggled it going into the end zone, but they get the field goal. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Well, this game's getting down to it, folks. It's another classic Tennessee-Alabama matchup. Tennessee leading 13-7. Tony's back on the phone with the offensive coordinator upstairs talking about a way to solve this Alabama defense. Well, Alabama is running up the Humphrey, and the ball is loose again, and Tennessee is recovered. Alabama came into this game with three turnovers all year, and they've turned it over twice in this game. They fumbled three times on their previous possession. Dale Jones got the ball. Watch 54. They're running the stun inside. He's trying to close it down. Ziegler nails him. Who is that? Chris White is number seven in there. The ball pops out. Dale Jones comes up with it. Big turnover at the 28-yard line of Alabama. Tennessee leads 13-7. Ray Perkins trying to encourage his team. That's three times the ball has been on the ground for Alabama in the third quarter. And off to the fullback. That's 35, William Howard. He drives to about the 26-yard line. So Tennessee, there you see the turnover situation. Alabama, three fumbles, two interceptions. That's the total for the year. Now remember, coming into this game, they had one interception and two fumbles for a total of three. So they've almost matched that in this one game. Tennessee, very good at getting those takeaways when somebody gives them the opportunity. There's that aggressive volunteer defense. They talked about the fact a matter of fact, Ray Perkins was concerned about the fact that Tennessee was so aggressive defensively. Robinson with the play fake on the second down nine. It's complete. Close to the first down, out of bounds at the 17-yard line. It'll be a first down to Charles Wilson, number 32. First down, Tennessee, leading 13-7 in the final moments of the third quarter. Missouri just barely trailing Nebraska. That's in the third quarter. Real battle there at Missouri. And look at that. In the second quarter, Georgia and Vanderbilt in a close one in Nashville, 6-3. Florida was, this game was nothing-nothing in the second quarter, and then kaboom, Florida in front of southwestern Louisiana, 38-0, a real, I said earlier this week, I thought it was probably the biggest mismatch in the country, and now looking though it may be. On a first down at the 18, UT, after recovering the Bobby Humphrey fumble. Penalty marker down in the secondary, the 25-second clock may have wound down. Sometimes that will happen to Robinson because of his audibles and checkoffs. Second quarter on an 80-yard drive. As I told you, that was aided by an interference call in the end zone. Other than that, they've had to settle for two field goals. See what happens this time after they recovered that Bobby Humphrey fumble. On the option, this is where Robinson is so dangerous. Inside the 10, about a yard away from the first down goes Tony Robinson. Joe Godwin with the tackle. What acceleration this quarterback has. Once he makes the decision, he tucks it under his arm and heads south. And that's the end of the third quarter. Tennessee leading 13-7. But watch Tony Robinson turn it upfield in a heartbeat, and he gets the first down. They make the long walk to the far end zone. Tennessee now has to drive into the roaring den of the Alabama faithful at Legion Field. Second down one at the eight-yard line. Full house backfield. Robinson, play fakes, has the ball, gets protection. Down he goes, hit hard at the 12. Cornelius Bennett and Kurt Jarvis combining, and Robinson appeared to be shaken up on that play. Play action, both tight ends releasing. Left tight end crossing pattern, right tight end corner route. 
Good job of coverage by Alabama. Kurt Jarvis, number 95, Cornelius Bennett, arrived to put the vice on Tony Robinson. Looks like they're working on his knee, Tim. Right knee, and he's in severe pain, as you can tell right now. Hopefully the injury is not, but Tony Robinson is hurt. Daryl Dickey, who has played very little this year, is warming up to go in, the senior from Gainesville, the backup to Tony Robinson. So Robinson is up now. They're helping him off. He looks tender on that right knee. Jarvis cuts off the, the north-south flow, and Bennett arrives. And that's painful, folks. He tries to get down. Oh, oh, boy. His foot was locked in the ground. That brings back bad memories. Don't show that again. Volunteers leading 13-7, 14-30 to go in the game. Third down four at the 11. Daryl Dickey, the senior backup in at quarterback now. He gives to Davis, who gets to the 10 and no more. Dickey with his second play of this game. Dickey has not been in any ball game until this one. This is his second play all year long. You see him looking at the knee of Tony Robinson. You notice the doctor going to the other knee. He's checking the, the variation and the flexibility between the medial collateral ligament and uh, on both knees. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt on fourth down. It is good. Tennessee increases their lead over Alabama to 16 to 7 with 13.44 to go in the game. But the story is right there on your screen. The injury to quarterback Tony Robinson. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Tax severity of the injury, but it's for sure Robinson won't be back in. I, I would almost say it's for sure. Short kickoff by Tennessee to Humphrey at the 8. To the 40-yard line, Bobby Humphrey, tackled by 45, Darren Miller. There's the right knee of Tony Robinson, 41-yard kickoff return. And this is the man who makes Tennessee go. The cliche says the straw that stirs the drink for Tennessee. Severe loss. Emotionally, that's really got to affect your football team. It's going to take them a minute to recover from the loss of that young man right there. And you just hate to see that happen. It's got to be a painful thing to watch. Now Alabama trailing 16 to 7 has 13 and a half minutes to see if they can come from behind. Tennessee on a three-game winning streak. Mike Shula complete to the 50-yard line to tight end Thornton Chandler. First down. Out. Tight end can be a really a dangerous weapon and hard to stop in that seam area. On a first down 10, I was going to say, uh, sometimes an injury even to an offensive player who's a leader like Where's Robinson the can slow down the defense. Let's see if it happens. The Turner to the 43-yard line. Because Robinson is such an emotional leader for Tennessee. We'll have to suck it up defensively here. And there's Tony on the sideline with the ice on that right knee. He got hit from the front, and uh, you saw his foot stick on the turf. When you get that kind of action, usually what you have is, uh, is damage to the, the cruciates, one of the uh, posterior or anterior cruciates, which control the back and forth movement of the knee. Second down three from the 42. Bell in motion. Bobby Humphrey. Driving for the first down for Alabama. Kelly Ziegler with the tackle. Interestingly, again here, the leading receivers for both of these football teams, Al Bell for Alabama and Tim McGee for Tennessee, have yet to catch pass in the space in college football. These teams started playing in 1901 at West End Park, not far from Legion Field. Alabama won that one 6-0. Now Chester Braggs in a tailback for Alabama, along with Craig Turner. Braggs is number 30. Going for Chandler, leaping grab at the 19-yard line to the big 6-6 tight end. Brown with a tackle. It's coming up to this ball game. 11:39 to go. Tennessee 16, Alabama 7. Tied ball. First and 10 at the 19 of the Volunteers. Bell in motion. Shula, not much pressure. Bobby Humphrey. Second 
touchdown reception of the year. A courageous grab. He was really stuck by Terry Brown, but fought his way into the end zone. The freshman who grew up in the shadow of Legion Field now hearing the cheers. Tennessee's heart and soul offensively is out of the ball game with a knee injury. Darrell Dickey, the senior backup quarterback, will have to come in and see if he can keep Tennessee out in front by the narrow two-point margin. Dickey had not played a down, had not thrown the ball at all this year for Tennessee. He's a senior, son of the athletic director. If you look at the stats on that scoring drive, new athletic director, Doug Dickey. This young man played his high school ball down in Gainesville, Florida, where Dickey was associated with the University of Florida. The thing we want to do is say hi. Bob Woodruff, of course, a longtime athletic director in Tennessee, and his wife Trudy at the game. We want to say hi to Bob's dad, Joe, who was a letterman at Georgia in 1913. Right Hospital. Well, yeah. Daryl Dickey on the roll. It's complete to Charles Wilson out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Very small gain. He's one out of two now. By the way, Tony Robinson's going into the locker room. We'll get a report, hopefully. You see him, I think, on a cart about to leave in front of the... No, he's on the bench in uh, front of the Tennessee fan down there. It's pretty warm on the field. It was 78 degrees at kickoff, and the sun is out now, so it's pretty hot down there. The crutch is by his side. A poignant story. Tony Robinson. Now Daryl Dickey has got the weight on his shoulder. Second down eight from the 22, Tennessee. The pitch to Keith Davis. Look at the speed. First down. 20 yards. 28, 29 yards for Keith Davis around the left end. Cooper and Robinson chasing him out of bounds. And Tony Robinson nodding his approval and still cheering despite the pain in his right knee. Nice block by the tight end of uh, Tennessee. Another good block by Galbraith, creating that crack. And as you mentioned, Bob, alluded to the speed of Keith Davis. He's something else. Keith Davis now with more yardage than he's had all year. That's his best performance. 127 yards on this day for the freshman from Nashville. They give it to Charles Wilson. He gets about two or three inside Alabama territory, but field position becoming critically important here, of course, as Tennessee has that two-point lead thanks to the three field goals by Reves with 10.56 to go in the ballgame. It has been another classic. Tony Robinson on crutches on the sideline. formation. Howard, the fullback, play fake. Here's a reverse to McGee. Needs a block. Gets it, but no yardage and penalty markers go down. That just didn't happen. All day long, Tennessee's been trying to get the ball in the air to Tim. Excellent Lee. job. I would not call it a clip. I wouldn't have called it either. It looked like he's, he's working to get his head around the front, and it was on the side. Brent Sal did it. Beautiful job, though, of staying home and keeping that play from developing. Last week, the Auburn-Florida State game, we saw a load of reverses. Guess you know the takeoff on that from the movie of a similar name. Second down, 27, Tennessee, after the penalty from their own 32. Darrell Dickey will throw his third pass of the game over the middle. It's incomplete. Just a little bit low, a little bit too tough to hold on to, intended for Vince Carter. So the drive stalls here for Tennessee, or at least it stalled thus far. It'll be third down 27 at the 32, and there goes Tony Robinson. And if the injury is as serious as it looks, there go a lot of the hopes of the volunteer fans this year. Tennessee 2-1-1 one, one coming into this football game. They have the lead by two here, but it has been a very expensive lead over Alabama. Now that's that uh, could make an editorial comment on the artificial turf because what happened was his foot stuck. On third down, 27, draw play Davis. Up two yards, down he goes at the 33. And now these Crimson Tide fans starting to play a role in the game as they are just exercising their lungs. Listen to this crowd. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I guess you can get the symbolism <laughs> of that sign. Get that guy's name. <laughs> oh, somebody will market a product every time you give them a chance. The good old <laughs> U.S. of A. <laughs> Bob Garman with a good punt to Albert Bell at his 24. Down he goes hard right in his tracks. So it's down to this, folks. Nine minutes, 19 seconds remaining in this game. Tennessee 16, Alabama 14. Crimson tied ball at the 24. Georgia led Alabama late in the opening game of the year, and Mike Shula drove them from behind. The score and beat Georgia. Let's see if he can do the same against Tennessee. Well, last time they moved the ball down the field, it was through the air. A couple of nice runs, but most of the yardage put away in the air. Shula is 12 out of 21 for 145 yards, one interception on the day. Single setback. Turner. Who gets the ball? And about four yards. Close to the 30-yard line goes Craig. Running that flare control pattern out of the fullback position. He just kind of heads straight down the line, then will turn up field. Shula looks at the tight end. If the linebacker's back at the tight end, he'll pop the fullback. Second down five, Alabama. Here's that shovel pass to Craig Turner. First down and more to the 43. Andre Kramer with the tackle. Alabama keeping it simple, relying on that offensive line. First down from the 42 at the time. Humphrey and Turner in the backfield. Shield with only a four man rush. Over the middle of Humphrey. For the 37 of Tennessee. Boom. This drive started at the Alabama 39 yard line. Shula has done this all year long. This ball is thrown right on time and perfectly. It has to be. See so you throw it right over the top of Ziegler before the safeties could get there and make the play. Beautifully thrown football. A, a dangerous throw, but beautifully thrown. I say dangerous because sometimes a tip ball, as happened earlier in the game, uh, results in an interception down the middle. First down, 10 at the 37. Still in the throw again. Oh, it's picked off by Tennessee's Dale Jones. We told you he was the big play man. Whoa, that was one of the shortest interceptions of a pass ever, about a foot and a half. Point blank. Took the bullet in the chest. Big, big turnover, and Alabama has committed the same number of turnovers today as they had the entire season coming into this game. Perkins telling Shula, nothing you can do about it. Just goes to lay it out there. Jones bats Whoa. the ball and then makes the catch. He was just throwing that little swing pass out to the fullback. Alabama had started that drive at their 25 and had driven and were really moving the ball until that turnover. Today, two interceptions, one fumble lost by Alabama. Tennessee had the one interception, no fumbles. That's been the story of the game. 16-14 Tennessee, 7.43 to go. Darrell Dickey replacing the injured Tony Robinson, showing good movement himself incomplete. At the 40-yard line, he was looking for tight end 81 Jeff Smith. Dickey showing some mobility there. And there's young Mike Shulett, who's thrown two interceptions today. Very unusual for him. One was a tip ball thrown a little bit behind Chandler, and that one was one of the most unusual things I've ever seen. Well, they what? talk about Dale Jones, the, the intangibles about a player like Dale Jones. Who's going to count on, a, on an interception of a pass from three yards away? That's right. Every time we've seen Dale Jones play, he's come up with big ones. Second and 10 from the 47. Howard and Keith Davis in the backfield. This is Davis on the sweep left. What a great job of running in traffic. He goes down hard at the 47. John Han with a tackle. We've seen a lot of football games, about 60 in the last three years and a month, and I haven't seen hitting much harder at any of them than this game. There's a penalty marker on the play at the line of scrimmage. Illegal motion, Tennessee. This offense is a uh, Ken Austin would be to Mississippi. And Mississippi is kind of crippled without Austin. Second down, 15 volunteers at the 43-yard line of Tennessee. Three-man rush. Dickey's going to keep it. 
He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's all Wayne Davis, who was injured in the first half, is back in there for Alabama, as we might mention is Godwin. Both of them have been shaken up for Alabama. Both have gone back into play. So it'll be third down 10. Tennessee now at the 48 after they intercepted the pass. They haven't been able to do much. Over the last three years, the average score of this game was 32 to 31. We're seeing much better defense this afternoon. A lot of courage on defense. People answering the call. It's a classic college football matchup. 16-14, Tennessee, 6.47 to go in the ball game. Good protection for Dickey. Incomplete. Had two receivers in the exact same area. It would have been a first down reception had Charles Wilson held on to the pass, but Smith and Wilson were both in that area. So Dickey now is one for five passing the ball. And Tennessee will have to turn it over again. Alabama will have six minutes, 42 seconds remaining in the game. There is Albert Bell. He has not had a reception in this ball game. They've been double covering him a lot, Bob, in their nickel scheme. They've been uh, taking him away from Alabama, forcing them to go other places. Into the end zone. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. And once again, the kicking game is playing a big role. Three field goals for Tennessee that gives them a two-point lead. And now the field position battle will take place in the next six minutes and 34 seconds. This is Turner, Network Television. 52-yard punt by Garmin, but I'm sure he would have been glad to give away some of the statistics to get this ball downed inside the 20 of Alabama. Went into the end zone for a touchback, and here comes Mike Shula and the Crimson Tide trailing by two. 6.34 remaining in the game. Bell without a reception thus far in motion. Here is Hill. Six yards. Darren Miller, 45, the tackle for Tennessee. That would, that's what you need on first down. Now it's second and four. You have a choice. If you want to, you can throw the ball. Most probably, they'll just run it a couple of more times. Take their time. Taking it down the field. Boy, look at that game up there in Nashville. 13-10. Georgia leading Vanderbilt at halftime. Nebraska has gone back out in front of Missouri, as you saw. Vandy playing tough. Very injured against Georgia, too. First down run, Alabama. Out to the 32-yard line. It was Murray Hill, the freshman from Atmore. So Georgia not having a first half cakewalk against Vanderbilt. Georgia with one loss in the SEC to Alabama in the opener can, of course, ill afford another one. Most people thought they'd have a cakewalk against Vanderbilt. Of course, the second half remains to be seen. And here, Tennessee with one loss in the league cannot afford another either. Most feel that one loss is all that you can have to win the SEC this year. Alabama undefeated. Kentucky, as of now, also undefeated. Florida not eligible. First and 10 from the 31. Here comes Bell. He has the blocks. Out of bounds. First down at the 47-yard line. Kramer knocked him out. Tennessee has really been hot in pursuit. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Tennessee 16, Alabama 14. First down, Alabama at their own 47. They give to Murray Hill. Inside Tennessee territory to about the 48. Hit by 16, Tommy Sims, who has nine tackles today from the strong safety position for the Volunteers. Talking to Dick Bumpus before the game, who coaches the inside linebackers, a former uh, great Arkansas player, and he said uh, they had to move around a little bit because they felt like they were a little bit outsized in the middle. Uh, one of the things that concerned them the most was just having the ball run right at them. Both these teams have 21 first downs on the day. Score 16-14, second down four. Greg Turner, no first down. Held shy of the 45-yard line. Ray Perkins. It's the life of a coach in the SEC, isn't it? Week after week after week. Quality opposition. Again, we said Georgia should have a cakewalk at Vanderbilt. They have a three-point lead at halftime. It's back to Hill. He is denied the first down on the third down and three. Darren Miller with a tremendously big defensive play for the Volunteers. Alabama will have fourth down out here at midfield, and they're going to call timeout, and Shula's going to go to the sideline. You'd think with 4.05 to go, they'd give the ball up. They here. probably have a pretty good feel for the defense that's going to be called. They've given Shula a couple of plays, and he'll make the decision on the line of scrimmage. It's a long fourth and four at the 47. 
you almost have to throw the ball, I would assume, fourth and four. Well, we have Murray Hill and Craig Turner in the backfield. The receivers are Greg Richardson and Al Bell, both split up there to the top of your screen. Big fourth down decision by Ray Perkins. Tennessee's coming with everybody. Incomplete after the tremendous pressure on the blitz by Tennessee. The gamble fails by the tide. The Volunteers take over at their own 47-yard line. Murray Hill comes out of the backfield. Headed toward the sideline. Just a mess up in communication, I imagine. Probably an option route, Bob, and the receiver read one thing and Mike Shula read something else. I thought, I thought maybe it would have been a short option to Murray Hill, but he took the sideline and stayed out there, so there was no doubt about what he was supposed to do. Tennessee, first and ten, in their own 47, leading 16-14, 4-0-1 to go in the game. Tony Robinson hurt, Darrell Dickey at quarterback. Keith Davis, flags down, Davis down at the 50. Dickey had been in the game a time or two, a one or time uh, earlier, but had not thrown a pass all year. Double tight ends, first and 15, Tennessee, back at their 42 now. Pitch to Davis, needs the block, gets outside, great speed. Good containment by Alabama, but Keith Davis still gets it inside Alabama territory to about the 47-yard line. Davis now around 135 yards rushing the ball this afternoon. Most importantly here. His field position and the time, 3.17 remaining in this game. Alabama has two timeouts left. Tennessee, all three of theirs. Of course, Tennessee will try to be just churning the clock, and it's running right now. And lead by two, 16-14. Okay, at this point in the game, no more bend but not break. you got to come after him. you got to pressure Tennessee's offense. Something Alabama is not used to doing. Look for 97 Cornelius Bennett, their big play guy. See if he can do something like Dale Jones did for Tennessee. And off to the fullback, Howard, short of the first down. That was second down four. It's going to bring up third down in about a yard or so. And Johnny Majors tenaciously clinging to a two-point lead, 16-14. He was a fighter and a scrapper as a player. He's no different as a coach. He's assembled a fine, fine staff. Walt Harris has done a great job as a mentor of his quarterbacks. And Listen to this crowd. It's deafening at Legion Field. Third down one at the 44, Tennessee. Davis. First down or close to it. It'll depend on where they spot it. He went down right at the flag. It looks to me as though he got the first down. What really surprises me is defensively, and some, some people, this is a first down. Some people might not understand that, this, but it the risk of confusing some folks they were in corner support the wide receiver way out to the wide side of the field if the corner is in primary support he can't get in to turn that play in to make something happen fast enough for it before it develops usually you got to get in some kind of a safety support in that particular situation short yardage Tennessee got the first down time all the way down to 130 remaining Tennessee first down from the 42 off for about three right up the middle to William Howard. John Han with a tackle. Alabama trailing by two. Clock stops at 121. Alabama uses one of their two remaining timeouts. So Tennessee took over at midfield when Ray Perkins went for it on a fourth down and Mike Shula couldn't hit his receiver. He looked for Al Bell but under tremendous pressure couldn't connect. There's the two point story and the story on the face of young Mike Shula. We'll be right back. In place of the injured Tony Robinson, Tennessee. I think defensively when you set up your game plan you go in by taking away what the opposition does best. They wanted to take away Timmy McGee. They wanted to take away the long pass. They've been successful in doing that. Tennessee's gotten more yards rushing the ball than Alabama would like to have given them but it's been a pretty good defensive football game. Now, we understand that this is Alabama's last timeout. The scoreboard here says there is one timeout remaining. 
So we'll check on the sideline and see for sure. We believe they are out of timeouts. Each team allowed three per half, and I believe Alabama's out of timeouts. That's three. That's one on this play with play before, and then when they considered going for it on fourth down, they took a timeout there, so that's three. There you go. That uh, with a minute 11 to go in the ball game. Again, the scoreboard's showing otherwise, but our statistics are accurate, and I will always count on Tim's memory. <laughs> the heck with the computers. 111 to go. The sideline conversation concluded, and Dickey, who has come in here, only gone one out of five passing for only two yards, but that's not what his job was in replacing Tony Robinson. His job was to keep the ball from being turned over in bad position, and he's done that thus far. Third and six at the 38. Davis hit in the backfield, loss of about three. Clock at 106. It's 51. 50. Tennessee can, of course, let that 25-second clock elapse take the five-yard delay of game penalty, give them a little more punting room to try to punt it to Alabama inside their 10, and they'll probably do just that. The 25-second clock is blocked from my view here, thanks to so many folks on the sideline here at Legion Field, but you can see that Tennessee's going to let it just down. There it goes. The flag is down. The 25-second clock has elapsed, and the game clock stops at 29 seconds in the game. Now, to say it isn't over is a cliche till it's over, but it's 16-14. Alabama is but a field goal away. They have no timeouts, but they have a great young, heady quarterback in Mike Shula and a, and a tremendous uh, under two-minute game plan, as you saw against uh, Georgia earlier in the year. It's tough to develop an under 30-second game plan. That uh, <laughs> takes a little bit more skill with no timeouts. And uh, Van Tiffen, they've got a tremendous weapon in Van Tiffen. He can nail it. I think he hit a 57-yarder against Texas A&M, so he's got the big leg. And Bob Garman goes in to punt for Tennessee. He has been shaky as a punter. He did not punt well against Florida by his own admission and that of his coach, Johnny Majors. He has not punted all that well today in terms of getting it out of bounds inside the 10 like he's wanted. And Alabama, you would think, would be going all out here for a punt block. And with 29 seconds to go, that's one of the procedures they have. The punt block coming into a play since Bobby Bowden made such a success of it at Florida State the last few years. Let's see what Alabama's special teams can do. Al Bell is back to take the punt at his own 10. So 29 seconds remain in the game. Alabama's out of timeout. Tennessee leads by two, 16-14. men on the line to go for this punt. They don't get it. Bad punt. Garman shanks it badly to the right. Five seconds he laps off the clock. They march it upfield here and they will say that this ball went out of bounds at the 33 yard line. So Garman gets off a less than choice punt here in Alabama with 24 seconds. They are 67 yards away from the end zone, but much closer, about 35 yards or so away from field goal range. What do you think's the outside uh, on Van Tiffen? How far can he hit it, Bob? Van Tiffen's longest has been 52 yards. He is two out of two, 50 plus this year. He's got the leg. Julep throws it as he's hit. It is not a grounding. He was throwing in the area of a receiver, but he went down under great pressure. 77, Richard Cooper was back there. Clock down to 20 seconds. It'll be second down 10. Tennessee, with this gambling defense, will just be coming. You can bet on that on every play. You'd think most teams would be in prevent, but Tennessee didn't prevent when they got into that tie with UCLA in their season opener. Richardson and Bell split wide to the right side. To the left side is running back Murray Hill. This time, Tennessee is prevent. Only three-man rush. Shula. It's caught by Bell, taken right out of the hands of the Tennessee player, but the clock runs 11, 10, and stops there so they can reset the chains. Tennessee, uh, Alabama has the plays called, so they'll be up. They are at the 44-yard line. Remember, you add 17. It's a 61-yard field goal from here. You can count it down on it, depending on what Alabama can get on this. Shula throws it out of bounds, almost picked off. He just rifled it out of bounds to stop the clock. Now six seconds left. I'd have thought they'd have tried to have gotten something on that play, because there's Van Tiffen. 
There you see he can kick it. 57, 53, 52, and 51. He's two out of two plus 50 this year. And it could come down to that. We said at the beginning it could be a kicking game battle, and we had a messed up punt. Alabama's going to try to get one play with six seconds left. Shula just throws it out of bounds again. Clock down to four. Lost two. I didn't quite get that one. Here comes Van Tippen. The line of scrimmage is the 44. Add seven to the 51, and 10 is a 61. Well, we've seen Kevin Butler hit him from that distance. In that last alignment, they're looking to see if Tennessee was out of position. Maybe they could get a couple yards. If not, they're going to make sure that this is the last play of the game. Got the distance. No, it does not have the distance. It is short by about five yards. Clock to double zero. The Volunteers have defeated Alabama at Legion Field. And that young man came up just a little bit short on the 61-yard field goal attempt. What a ball game we saw here today. Paid dearly for this victory. Losing quarterback Tony Robinson. Johnny Majors. Four wins in a row over Alabama. Prior to that, Alabama had defeated Tennessee 11 times in a row. We'll be back in just a moment. This is Super Football Saturday on Turner Network Television. Alabama 14, Johnny Majors. Head coach at Tennessee on the sideline, uh, who's played against Alabama right here at this field. Uh, coach, first of all, we want to talk to you and congratulate you on your victory, but I know you're feeling a little less than enthusiastic because of the injury to Tony Robinson. What's the latest on that? Well, the, only thing, the trainer told me uh, shortly thereafter, in about two or three minutes, I eased over to him, and the trainer didn't think it looks very good. I'd say our chances of having Robinson the rest of the season are probably nil. And it's a great victory for our team. Our team showed so much courage. Our defense, my gosh. It's a very costly victory, but it's a great victory for Tennessee. It's hard to do this four years in a row, and I'm awfully proud of our young men and the great job that our assistant coaches have done. You know, did anybody, what was said after Robinson was injured? We said sometimes when a player of his magnitude goes down, it affects the whole team, but it did not well, affect your defense. I, I, I said something to Ken Donahue, our defensive coordinator. says, Ken, the last quarter, as far as your play calling call goes, Robinson's out for the game and part of the season. I said, don't say anything to Walt Harris, our offensive coordinator. But Walt asked me how he was. I says, Walt, Tony's out for the fourth quarter. He said, how's it look, coach? I said, it's not very good. But I said, keep on the right track, keep your spirits. Uh, I want to send it to those two people. I didn't want anybody else to know. I was afraid it might affect our squad, and they were playing very courageously. Well, this puts you in a pretty good position in the SEC race. I know you've got tough, tough games coming up, but this has to be a critical and big victory. I don't know if you've had a bigger one in recent years. This is a great victory. It's a big victory. We've got a very fine football team. This is the biggest blow I've probably ever received as a head coach, but we have some courageous young men, and we've just got to close ranks and uh, keep marching because we've got a heck of a tough schedule with six more games, and this is uh, a whale of a league. Johnny Majors, congratulations on the 16-14 win here today. Thank you. Johnny Majors, head coach at Tennessee, and Tennessee holds on as Van Tiffen attempts but comes up short on what would have been an SEC record 61-yard field goal at the buzzer. What a great ball game as the rivalry continued between Tennessee and Alabama, and the Volunteers have now won four in a row. Alabama now with one loss in the SEC. Tennessee also with one loss in the Southeastern Conference. Only Kentucky, and they have to play at LSU tonight, remains undefeated in the Southeastern Conference in the race. Florida, of course, ineligible. So we hope you've enjoyed the game here from Legion Field. It's been brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers. Reach for that distinctively crisp, clean taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. By Buick and your Buick dealers for comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality. It's today's Buicks. And by the U.S. Armed Forces, a great place to start. Also brought to you by the Commodore 128 Personal Computer, a higher intelligence at a lower price. By Delta, serving more than 100 cities in the U.S. and overseas. Delta gets you there. And by Coors, the beer with a difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. Next week, we hope you'll join us as we take our TNT cameras to Athens, Georgia for Kentucky at Georgia. Executive producer, Don Ellis. Producer, Skip Ellison. Our director, Ken Fouts. Associate producer, Rodney Triplett. Associate director, Richard Croker. From Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, this is Bob Neal for Tim Foley and our entire crew thanking you for joining us for Southeastern Conference Football.
up next on most of these stations, Super Football Saturday continues with the Football Action Report. down to Alabama and did something today they've done for four straight years in a row, and that is, quite frankly, beat the Crimson Tide. It was at Legion Field, Alabama's home away from home, 76,000 watching this one. Everybody wants to say roll tide. Some people say it differently than others, but the Vols were not intimidated. Scoreless second quarter, Tony Robinson, the volunteer quarterback, dumps it off to Keith Davis, and the freshman turns on the afterburner to the far sideline, 25-yard gain for Tennessee to set up their first score of the game when Charles Wilson takes it to the left side on the pitch out. 7 to nothing, Tennessee on the road, and Johnny Majors rallying the troops. The tide will come back next time they get the ball. Third and 10, Mike Shula for Alabama. Going deep for Craig Richardson. They would take it in on the next play and tie the game at 7-7. Seven and seven. Now, Carlos Rivez of Tennessee gave the Volunteers a three-point field goal at halftime and a lead. Two more field goals in the second half. This one from 47 yards away, so Tennessee... On top by nine points, but the lead cost them dearly because in the drive for that third field goal, quarterback Tony Robinson hit from the side, injuring his knee. The extent will be known when they examine it more fully back at home on Sunday. Tony Robinson comes out of the game. He was on crutches afterwards. This could be a big blow. Bama turning the tide back in their favor. Shula to the freshman Bobby Humphreys. Down at the two, gets in for the score. Bama is only down by a deuce. And a bad punt, giving Van Tiffen a chance at the gun from 61 yards away. And remember now, he's hit from 57, but he's just a go short. And Tennessee. It's football time in Tennessee from Legion Field in Birmingham. It's time for Southeastern Conference football. The Alabama Crimson Tide, coached by third-year mentor Ray Perkins, now 4-1 overall, 2-0 in the Southeastern Conference against the Tennessee Volunteers, coached by Johnny Majors in his ninth year. Now 2-1-1, overall 1-1 one one in the league. A tight defensive struggle develops in the first quarter, and Robinson faces a third down early in the second period. Third down long for the balls. Robinson, here comes pressure. Robinson steps up, good run, instead dumps the pass out here, pull down at the 45, down to the 40, down to the 35, down to the 30. This is Keith Davis, who is finally rolled out of bounds at the 28 yard line of the Crimson Tide, where Tennessee will have it first down and 10 to go. Robinson could have run, then he caught a glimpse of the streaking Keith Davis coming across the middle, went underneath to him, and Davis ends up with a 25-yard sprint, and it's first down, Tennessee. Nine plays late, the balls have it at the Alabama one. Wilson and Rovays make it 7 nothing. But Alabama responds with a touchdown drive of its own. And after a missed field goal, the tide moves to the 48-yard line. Alabama with two wideouts right. Shula with time across the middle. The pass is going to be intercepted. Tennessee at the 30. Back to the 35, to the 40. Needs the block on the near side. Gets one. Has the ball to the 38 and is knocked down as he gets to the 38-yard line. That's Charles Davis with his interception. Rovays gets another chance, and this time is true from 38 yards out, and the balls lead at halftime, 10 to 7. The balls add another field goal in the third quarter and lead 13-7 late in the period. After the fumble recovery by Jones, Robinson rips off an ice gain on the option on the final play of the quarter as the Vols seek the knockout punch. But adversity strikes the Tennessee team on the next play as Robinson is hurt trying to scramble. The Vols settle for a field goal for a nine-point lead, but with the injury to Robinson, the momentum shifts to Alabama. Quarterback Shula directs the tie to a quick score to cut the lead to two points. And Alabama gets the ball back with plenty of time. Shula back to throw. Left hand out into the flat. Flat broken up. Was that intercepted in midair? Ladies and gentlemen, what a play by Dale Jones. He was two feet away from Mike Shula. And as Shula released the ball, Dale Jones just reached out and picked it out of midair. An unbelievable interception by a big play player, Dale Jones, Jr., it may have been the play of the season, and Jones described it later. Well, I, I seen it was going to be a screen. It was a reach game, but, and they didn't go to the tight end, so I knew he was going to throw it to the back, and I just, you know, I just jumped as high as I could. 
And uh, I was just lucky, you know, the ball was right there and I just snagged it. The balls are unable to move the ball and Alabama comes storming back. For Alabama, third down, two and a half, three yards to go. The tide in the game, six of ten on third down conversion. Shula has the play. The tight end Chandler will be deployed to the left side. High formation. Bell is into the boundary right. Pitch will go.